You might think it'd be easier to just use white paint to add these spots on top of the red colour, but if you want your toadstool to look realistic, this is the best way to do it. Hi, I'm Anna Mason. Welcome to this episode of Nature Studio TV, here to help you give your paintings the wow factor. In this mini class, I'm going to show you how I painted this detailed filled fly agaric toadstool in watercolour. It might look like I'm painting this larger than life, but that's not the case where they grow in the woods near where I live. Let's take a look. Once I've made my outline drawing, I began painting as always by mapping out the lightest colour areas in the composition, which were the spots and the stem, with pale dilute paint. I paid attention to where they appeared more yellow or grey and varied my paint mixes to match. In the stem, I used a stippling brush technique to start building up the slightly stripy visual texture I could see. When those spots, which are called scales, had dried, I went back to add more details to them. Usually I don't get so detailed this early on in a painting, but because these scales were so pale and the surrounding areas were going to be so much darker, it was easier to work with watery mixes at this stage than it would be once the red colour was surrounding them. Here I was paying attention to all the little shadows I could see in my reference photo, making sure that I wasn't working in a uniform way, as that would detract from the realism. I then used some red mixes to apply the palest version of the red colour of the mushroom's cap, again altering the paint mix where the hue appeared more orangey or more of a browny red. There are two main benefits of starting with a pale underpainting like this. One is that if you make a mistake with watery paint, it's much easier to fix than if you went straight in with darker paint. Layering paint also means that you can leave little gaps through to the colour beneath, and this greatly helps to achieve a textured, natural appearance. Now if I'm going a bit fast for you here, it's because this demo is just a whistle-stop guide through the process. The full length class, where I talk you through every step, is an hour and a half in length. That's included with Nature Studio membership, and I'll show you some member results at the end of this video. Next, I added some pale brown and grey to the areas of soil around the base, and when that layer had completely dried, I went back in with a thick, dark paint mix. These were the very darkest colours in the painting, so having them painted would give a visual anchor and help me to judge how dark to take the reds next. To darken the toadstool's red cap, I matched to the darkest reds I could see, using the tip of my brush to create definition to the edges of the scales as I painted round them. I worked into the mid-tone areas of the cap, adjusting the brightness of the paint mix as I darkened up around the scales. It was starting to look really 3D now. Making sure the paint beneath had dried, I added more layers of red to darken the cap. And when that was dry, I carefully applied some watery variations of brown and yellow to glaze over some of the scales, which were now looking too light. You might think it would be easier to just use white paint to add these spots on top of the red colour, but if you want your toadstool to look realistic, this is the best way to do it. You'd never get the spots looking as bright or as detailed using white paint with watercolour. When those scales were dry, I made some more adjustments to the red areas, continuing to use the tip of the brush to create definition. With the cap looking about right, it was now time to darken the stem. I cleaned my palette and brush and refreshed my water and then used dilute mixes of purpley grey in the more shadowy parts and yellow greys on the brighter areas. Working in watery layers, allowing each layer to dry before the next, meant I could carry out this delicate balancing act to create natural looking transitions with just enough visual texture. Then I turned my attention back to the mushroom's base, using the tip of the brush to paint the little lines that made up a rough, hairy texture and added more details around the little patches of soil. Now it was time for a final round of adjustments and darkening wherever I could see it was needed. I made sure I had a tea break before I did this so that I could come back with fresh eyes. This final adjustment stage is always my favourite part of the process because it's so meditative and you can really get into the flow, looking back and forth between your painting and your reference photo until you no longer spot any areas that need to be darkened. When I'd reached that point, I knew my painting was finished. A full length video class of this toadstool is available now with Nature Studio membership. If you've enjoyed this mini class, please subscribe to Nature Studio TV, then pop over to naturestudio.com where you can sign up for a set of free classes and find a whole heap of resources to help you capture the beauty of nature on your paper. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Have you taken my free full length watercolour class yet? If not, you're in for a treat. In it, I guide you step by step through painting a juicy, realistic pair that'll make you think, wow, I did that. 
you'll learn a repeatable, reliable watercolour method that you can go on to use for painting all kinds of other subjects. I'm confident you'll discover something that I already know, that you're a better artist than you think. I teach everything about my watercolour method in this full length class and I'm sharing it with you for free because I want to show you what you can achieve with the right instruction. If it ignites a spark in you, just as it has for thousands of others who've taken this class, there are hundreds more detailed tutorials you can unlock if you choose to become a Nature Studio member. So get the free class now and get ready to wow yourself with your results.